We are back at the Assembly Hall. I'm Jim Albrecht, and with me are, well, they're, they're going to be responsible for a lot of the next game you're about to see because I'm going to be talking with some Farmington fans who also have sons who play in this game as well, at least two of the three ladies do. And I'll tell you what, I'll just go along the way here and let you introduce yourselves and your son, if you could. Ann Anderson and Rob is 42. I know you're a fan, and you also have a Welch out there. Right, Kathy Welch, my son Scott, 32. And you don't have a son out there, but it doesn't matter, does it? That's right. I'm Becky Ritter, and I'm just a fan. Now, I want to talk about the sectional. You guys all heard, or I should say you ladies all heard. You know, I talked to so many coaches out here. You ladies all heard that you guys were not favored to even come out of your sectional. But then Orion beat Knoxville, and lo and behold, Farmington beat Orion. Were you surprised at all, or is that the beauty of basketball? You don't worry about who's favored. Just go to the game. Right, we just play to win and play as a team and take one game at a time. What's it like in Farmington? Is anybody home is what I'm asking. I don't think so. I think everybody's in Champaign. And what are your reactions now? We're about 10, 15 minutes away from another ball game. I mean, are, are the butterflies that you used to have when you were a little girl yes. back again? Yes, I have no one playing, but they're here. They're in my stomach right now. <laughs> What what do you do when your son comes? Do you do you talk about basketball with your sons? Do you do you have any advice, God forbid, for your son for basketball, or is that all up to the coach? We let the coach pretty well do that, and we just give him a lot of praise and support. Now, did anybody have a son the second or third day in the hospital? Somebody handed him a basketball. Anybody do that? I think we did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My husband is an ex-basketball coach, and so from the time Scott came home, I think he had a basketball or a baseball or a football in his hand. Well, let me tell you, however this game turns out, enjoy yourself. You are part of March Madness. Without you folks, we don't have it. Thank you. Thank you All right, that's the ladies from Farmington, and we'll be back with more on this second game of the quarterfinals. But first, this from your network sponsors. Well, back in the assembly hall, and uh, we're waiting game number two in the quarterfinal round, matching uh, Farmington against Aurora Christian. Frank Fasoni is standing by at courtside with uh, Tom Wersman, the coach of the Farmington Ball Club, and uh, I think Frank is just about set to go. Thank you very much, Art, and Coach Tom Wersma, welcome to the assembly hall in the Elite Eight. Well, thank you very much. This is really an honor. Tell me when you first thought this year that this team of yours from Farmington had a chance to get here. Probably not until about the regional championship, Frank, because uh, there, we started off really well but had a little bit of a June swoon in January. But then once February started, we got on a roll. But uh, it wasn't until really probably about the end of the regional start of the sectionals that we thought we had an opportunity to come. Tell the viewers about your team a little bit. What should they look for? Well, we're a really, really balanced basketball team. We have five starters that average anywhere from nine and a half to 14 points a game. Uh, we're going to try to get the ball up and down the court. We're going to press as much as we possibly can. So you'd like a fast tempo in the game. What problems does Aurora Christian give you? Well, the Davidson boy just causes all kinds of problems. Uh, when a guy that's that big that can play inside and outside, if he was just inside, I think he could stack up inside. Or if he was just outside, you could really pressure. But he's got the ability to go both ways. And then they've got some guards that are awfully quick. So they do cause us a lot of problems. Well, good luck. Congratulations on a great year. Well, thank you very much, Frank. Tom Wurzba from Farmington will step in. And now we'll ask the head coach from Aurora Christian, Don Davidson, to come by. Congratulations, coach. Thank you very much. Tell us about your team. Well, we've got uh, four seniors at start and one junior. Um, my son, Mark Davidson, is a captain, leading scorer, leading rebounder. And the other four seniors have really fit in well. We only have two starters back from last year's team. It was 27-3, got to the super sectional. Is it difficult to coach your son? No, it's not. Uh, he's a highly motivated and uh, just intense competitor, and that's a, a real privilege and an honor to coach a player like that. What were this team's goals that you and the team set before this season started? We didn't say it, but we said at the time we'd, uh, we'd like to win 20, but we were all thinking higher than that. And we wanted to be peaking at the time that the regional tournament started, and we certainly have been. Coach, what did you tell your team before they came out on this court this afternoon? I said, relax, enjoy the competition. What uh, about the scouting report on Farmington? We know that they have uh, five players that average between nine and a half and uh, 14 points a game. So I said, everybody, you've got to do your job. You've got to block out. You've got to help and recover on defense. You've got to play with intensity on defense and uh, shoot the ball well. What's the key to this game? What's going to decide it? I think if we can uh, out-rebound them and do a good job on the boards, I think that'll be the key. Coach Davidson, good luck to you. Congratulations. Thank you, Frank. Don Davidson from Aurora Christian will be back at the Assembly Hall. These messages. Ready? 
We are about six minutes away from tip-off between Aurora Christian and Farmington. And with me right now is Jerry Krieg, the head coach of Kankakee McNamara, who knows a lot about Aurora Christian because he fell to them in the super sectionals. If you're a coach and you got a game plan, how do you try to stop these guys? Well, going into the game, we knew we had to try to contain Mark Davidson. Uh, we felt he was one of the best players we saw all year, and he certainly proved that in our super sectional game. I think the key to Aurora is their point guard, Mike Mann. And we felt pretty fortunate there because we have an outstanding one of our own in Austin Provo. So we thought we might be able to win that battle. But uh, little did we realize that Mr. Davidson will come in with 37 points and 20 boards on us. I was just about to ask you, you know, you can sit there for three nights and pound your brain and rack it and get a game plan together, and then something happens that you can't really a call. And that, that's what makes high school basketball so good. Right. Uh, we, had, we had scouted him the first game of his section when they played uh, Timothy Christian, I think it was. And our scouts came back with a correct report. He's a great shooter. I saw him play last year in the super sectional game when he was more of an inside player. And he slimmed down this year, and he's just got a great rotation on the ball, and he's a legitimate all-state player. Well, they say numbers can be deceiving, and when you look at your numbers for the year as far as one loss, 17 and 12, and people go, well, they put it together late in the season and made a run. But you play 12, I believe, class AA schools, and that makes you tough right off the bat when the second season starts. Right. Uh, we played 12 of those. Uh, we've always told our kids we will be ready when March rolls around. It's kind of funny. It was our third super sectional in five years. In 84, we ran into Lowell Hamilton. And then uh, two years ago, we ran into Andrew Amaya and uh, a good team at the Sweet 16 from Walter Lutheran and Brian Hill. And then this year, of course, we ran into maybe a combination, one of the best we've ever seen on offense and defense of Mark Davidson. You can't talk about Kankakee McNamara without talking about Austin Provost, a heck of a guard. Yeah, I've been there 18 years, and he's probably the best player I've ever coached. He might not be the best at any one thing, but when it comes down to winning and doing the things it takes to win, Austin's the best. Uh, he made the Sun-Times All-State team, and last night he was second-team IBCA, so uh, he's just an outstanding player, an outstanding person. Quick question. Do you want to enjoy yourself down here? I know you want to, but can you? Because, man, you, you want to be down here coaching. That's what you want to do. Well, I said as soon as Aurora beat us there tonight, it was really disappointing, but... It's going to be fun to watch Mark Davidson play and not have to worry about uh, getting an upset stomach when he touches the ball. That's Jerry Creek, the head coach of Kankakee McNamara. Enjoy the weekend, Coach. Thank you very much. And now let's go to the table and Art Kimball. Art. Thank you very much, Jim. And Jim Mungie back with us, the uh, head basketball coach at Lawrence Bell, our analyst uh, this year for the Class A tournament. And, uh, Jim, here we have a matchup again, something like the first ball game. Uh, Farmington, a bit of a surprise being here. Of course, Aurora Christian, state rated all year long, among the top five in the state throughout the campaign, but the farmers have the task uh, to try to uh, to pull a surprise. Well, they've been kind of giant killers along the tournament trail, uh, Art, and uh, they defeated an undefeated team to get here, and uh, they're a scrappy bunch that play good hard-nosed defense and have a lot of balance, so uh, from their standpoint, I guess this is another giant they're out to kill. Talking to Tom Wurzbaugh last night, uh, the coach at Farmington at a rather great length, and he tells me these kids are pretty well-rounded athletes. They, of course, Farmington had great football success. I think they were in the state football playoffs five years in a row. Haven't been the last couple of years. They've had a good track program, so forth and so on. So this is a school that is used to athletic success. They've lost six ball games, but they play good people. Right, and uh, I think... Uh, they are dominated by an outstanding junior class, and uh, even though they start a couple of uh, seniors, a couple juniors, uh, the future looks pretty good for them. And here's Aurora and Christian. The school is only 15 years old. They've been in the IHSA, what, two years? Been in the super sectional both years, Champaign the second year. They're going to be spoiled, aren't they? They're going to be very <laughs> spoiled. 178 students, uh, very small enrollment, but uh, some quality kids in that It's got to be one of the hotbeds of basketball in the state is the city of Aurora in that area. You know, you right now, you talk about Aurora Christian here in the Class A tournament, led by their fine All-Stater, Mark Davidson. Then you've got Aurora West playing for a sectional championship tonight. Aurora East, the team West had to beat to get to the sectional. Uh, the uh, Science and Math Academy had a good ball club up there. Wabansi Valley playing for a sectional championship tonight. That's a lot of talent in one community. Isn't right, it? plus Aurora Marmion and uh, Central Catholic. Yep. So there's a lot of schools in that area, and all their basketball programs seem to be doing quite well. The thing that uh, really has added to the enthusiasm at the Assembly Hall this afternoon is just a tremendous crowd down here. And uh, as a result, of course, I think the kids picked that emotion up. And uh, the basketball is always a bit more exciting. You can hear the crowd roaring. There's the farmer, uh, the farmer crowd from Farmington. They're here in great numbers. And, of course, the Aurora Christian fans are as well. 
for what shapes up as another fine quarterfinal ball game. If you just joined us, Trenton Westland won the first quarterfinal this afternoon over Shelbyville by a score of 67 to 52. So we're just seconds away from the introduction of the two rosters and the starting combinations in this battle at the Assembly Hall. And don't forget, tonight we'll be with you at 7 o'clock, the evening session, quarterfinal round of a state tournament, always tremendously exciting, a lot of emotional ball games, and uh, probably the most exciting Class A day of basketball or Double A day of basketball that we have uh, all year long. All right, now let's check out these rosters, meet the two teams. We go to Steve Adams in the Assembly Hall. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet the coaches and players for this second quarterfinal round game in Class A, featuring the Farmington Farmers and the Eagles of Aurora Christian. First, introducing Farmington High School, entering this game with a record of 22 wins and six losses. Here is the head coach of Farmington in his seventh season, Tom Wiersba. Assistant coaches Mike Larson and Brian Voltesiak. And now the players. Number 14, 5'7 junior Gene Keppel. Number 20, a 5'9 junior Sean Gray. Number 24, a 6 foot sophomore Josh Putrick. Number 25, a six foot senior Pablo Zulu. Number 30, a six foot senior Ron Davis. Number 40, a 5'11 junior Kevin McMullen. Number 54, a 6'1 senior Mike Kane. Now let's move this writing lineup. A point forward, a 63 senior, 34, Tim Martin. Martin averages 9.5 points a game on the season. At the other corner, a 6'1 senior, number 22, Bob Anderson. 11.5 score. At the center, a 63 junior, number 24, Greg Sewell. Gets you 65% from the field. At one guard, a 6 foot junior, Number 22, Michael Rutledge. Rutledge at 12 points per game average, 73% free throw shooter. This is 62 junior number 32, Scott Welch. 13.9, team scoring leader on a very balanced club. Those are the farmers of Farmington High School. And now, let me see the people of our little Christian. They're in this game with a record of 29 and 2. Here is the head coach. His 13th season, Don Davidson. Assistant coaches, Jerry Gillsdorf, Dick Dorsey, and Wes Christian. And now the players. Number 14, a 5'9 senior, Kirk Wissett. Number 20, a 5'8 sophomore, Eddie Smith. Number 24, a 16 junior, Mike Jurassic. Number 30, a 5'8 junior, Mike Kelly. Number 32, a 62 junior, Dan Brummel. Number 34, a 62 junior, Quinn Kinney. Number 40, a 63 junior, Greg Schroeder. Number 50, 510 junior, Bob Van Plu. Number 52, a 511 junior, Patrick Coleman. Number 54, 58 junior, Jason Benson. And now the starting lineup. At one forward, a 6'1 senior, number 22, Louis Lambert. Lambert averages 10 points a game on the field. At the other forward, a 6' senior, 42, Tim Hayden. 51% field goal shooter, 7.2 average. At center, a 6'6 junior, number 44, Mark Davidson. 
First team AP All Stater has scored over 30 points seven times this year. Chesney, academically number one in his class, and Ryan Waymaker. Coach's nephew with a 15 point per game average. Those are the Eagles of Aurora Christian. Now let's see the officials for the second quarter final round game. Tom Bryant of Effingham and T.D. Highsmith of Oblong. There are the officials, and now let's take time out for one of your network sponsors, Century Company. What did it mean, uh, coaching in the state tournament? It was really a dream come true. It was uh, two sons playing basketball for me. It was my wife getting very involved. It was two sons who became All-State basketball players. It was a dream for a father that came true at Champaign, Illinois. Bob Gregorich, who coached Havana to the Elite Eight five times, and his fellow country company's agents salute the players in this week's tournament. Well, there's a good view of the assembly hall. Excellent crowd for this afternoon session. Quarterfinal round in Champaign. Aurora Christian in their home white uniforms breaking out on the floor, trimmed in scarlet and silver or gray, I guess. Kind of like a silver gray. That'll cover it, won't it, Jim? Yeah, I think that would qualify, Art. That's a tough color to, to pick out on that kind of material, but it's attractive uniform. Farmington in their traveling purple, trimmed in gold. Same colors as Shelbyville earlier this afternoon. And we're set to go. And stepping in is Mark Davidson to jump against Greg Sewell. And we'll get this one underway in the assembly hall. The winner takes on Trenton Westland, 11-15 tomorrow morning. That bright and early semifinal starter. Basketball will be flipped in the air by P.D. Uh, uh, Thomas Bryant's going to flip it in the air. P.D. Highsmith, the other official, we're underway. With the basketball, Aurora Christian bringing the ball across is Mike Mann. Mann right down the lane, a whistle, I mean, the ball dropped. The basket's going to count for a man, and a foul call right off the get-go here in the assembly hall as Christian takes a 2-0 lead. And the foul has been uh, whistled on Rob Anderson. Anderson cut over to try to cut him off, and just like lightning, Mike Mann drills in the drive-in layup. It wasn't exactly a swisher, was it, Jim? Rattled around, used all the iron. Mann's a good player. That was a nice drive to start the ball game. Free throw by Mann. And we got a 3 nothing score with the Eagles of Don Davidson, a graduate of Illinois Wesleyan on top. Farmington brings the ball across. The big guy, Greg Sewell, at 6-3, and he is their biggest starter. So they're giving up some size to Davidson inside at 6-6. Uh, Farmington ball handling. Well out on the floor, the basketball controlled by Jim Martin. Rebound on the inside. Here is a follow up and in. Gives the field goal to Scott Welch. Nice follow-up effort. So Welch ties it. It doesn't tie it. It's a 3-2 ball game. The three-point play by Mann uh, still holding up as far as the Eagles are concerned. On the left wing for Aurora Christian is Tim Pavey. They work low on the inside to Davidson. The left-hander up and in. Nice little fadeaway to make it a 5-2 ball game. First team AP All-Stater Mark Davidson. In fact, he's been first team every Class A All-State ball club. A unanimous pick. Ball swatted out of bounds right in front of our position here in the assembly hall. There's a good look at uh, Aurora Christian's uh, Jake Chesney. And the play will be inbounded now by the Farmers from Farmer City. They make the play in from out of bounds to Michael Rutledge. Rutledge uh, kind of son is a redhead up over the uh, timeline here in the assembly hall. On that left-hand dribble as he goes to Scott Welch. Welch holding. Ball knocked away on the inside. Davidson with the steal. Looks like Aurora Christian is some sort of a zone, Jim. 5-2, the Eagles down in the break. Here's Chesney off the glass. Dave Chesney, 7-2 ball game. Aurora Christian on the lead, and uh, Farmington throws the ball errantly, but with good reason. The ball was deflected out of bounds by Louis Lambert. The poor Aurora Christian. Ball inbounded by the Farmers. Deep in the corner, the ball goes to Sewell. Sewell goes to the baseline. Not a lot of room there as he was cut off tough. Good defensive move by number 22, Lambert. Out here on the dribble is Michael Rutledge for the Farmers, trying to get something going. Ball knocked away and deflected out of bounds. Farmer City comes in at 22 and 6. And of course, this ball club is out of the Prairie Land Conference, located in uh, Fulton County, Farmington, a community of 3,118. Ball inbounded. Again on the dribble is Rutledge. I've just been corrected by my statistician who says Farmington is not a city. Hey, I don't know, it's a city. 
community, right? That's the baseline. Short center on jump shot by Rob Anderson. One of the biggest cities in Class A basketball today. Over the touchline on the dribble is Mann. Mann down the lane. Underhand scoop layup. No good. Rebound followed by Davidson. Won't go. Battle four. Kick back out. Lambert has the shot deflected and finally hauled out by Greg Sewell on the inside. Sewell gets it on for Farmington. He averages 7.7 .7 rebounds a game. Farmington turns the ball over. Knocks to the floor. Loose ball. And up with it finally comes Mike Mann as things getting a bit helter skelter here in the early going. 7 2. Aurora Christian on the lead. Davidson. Lambert rims the bucket. Louis shot wouldn't go down, and the rebound controlled by the Farmers and the person of Scott Welch. I'll tell you, Jim, in the assembly hall, I think every club experienced a little bit of tightness in the first quarter. So right. loosen up. On the perimeter, three-point bomb and air ball. Fired up by Jim Martin, a follow on the inside. The ball hits up on top of the board. It was still in play, however. Comes off the board. Davidson grabbed the rebound and was fouled. It looks like Rob Anderson may pick up the foul. If he does, it's number two. Yeah, he did. Okay, it's a, a foul on Scott Welch. Welch picks up the foul. Looks like Aurora Christian is really trying to dictate the tempo, Art. They're pushing it up the floor hard and hitting the boards hard. Jumper on the base by Dick Chesney. 9-2, Aurora Christian. With a seven-point cushion with 4.54 here to go in the game's initial period. As Michael Rutledge, number 22, bringing the ball down. They work inside. That's Sewell, number 44. Trying to move against the 44 in white, who is Davidson for Aurora Christian. Perimeter, Scott Welch. Welch is being checked off and uh, covered by number 12, Mike Mann, on the perimeter. The shot by Anderson will not go. Thus far, Farmington is having difficulty finding the range. Aurora Christian with a seven-point lead at 9-2 as they come down against the Farmington defense, which basically looks sort of like a matchup zone, doesn't it, Jim? Yeah, they're playing playing as, as close to man-to-man -man as they can, but they're trying to help down on Davidson. Here's a foul underneath. Uh, and let's see how they're going to call it. It's going to go against Martin of Farmington. Jim Martin call for the push, and Aurora Christian will inbound the basketball. Number 42, Tim Pavey, will make the play in front of bounds for the Eagles. He does so well on the floor to Chesney. Here's number 12 with the basketball, Mike Mann. Mann with that uh, good move to uh, Davidson, top of the circle, tries the three, and the rebound, hauled down, controlled by Rob Anderson. Looks like we've got another big man, Arctic, and shoot the three. Yeah, he's, he's uh, done very, very well all season long. As a matter of fact, Davidson is a 47% three-point shooter. And we're going to have a timeout taken now by uh, Farmington. 3.52 to play in the first quarter. Aurora Christian by seven at 9-2. And now this from one of your network sponsors, John Deere. Well, tonight, Prairie Central, the top-ranked Class A team in the state, takes on Marengo. Our coverage will begin at uh, 7 o'clock here on the IHSA Network. That will be followed by uh, Norris City Omaha infield against the Pittsfield Sockies in the second game to conclude the quarterfinal round. Here we've got a 9-2 ball game with Aurora Christian leading. So far, Farmington is one of six, and Aurora Christian four of ten from the field. This team exactly quite hot at the moment. Aurora Christian with the basketball is Tim Pavey, well out on the floor. To number 12, Mike Mann. That's 5'10, 140, an 18 year old senior. Davidson at long range, fires up the three. It does not go. The left hander couldn't get it home, but batted back to Mann. And we have a little pushing and shoving on the inside, and a whistle and a foul is going to be called on Greg Sewell. Number 44 picks up the personal inside for Farmington. I got squared away with uh, Dennis Flynn, our statistician over here. He said I earlier referred to Farmington as Farmer City. That was the reason for the city comment. Well, Farmer City just down the road a little bit. Of course, this is Farmington in Fulton County. Mike Mann for Aurora Christian. There's the overhead shot and a good one. That's Davidson. Davidson, uh, nice feed underneath and uh, deflected away. They're going to say off the fingertip of Jake Chesney. Chesney couldn't hang onto the ball for the Eagles. Lost it out of bounds, and Farmington will inbound. As Scott Welch pulls the trigger. Here's the lob to Michael Rutledge. The redhead sails. Michael Rutledge with his first bucket. That cuts the lead to five at 9-4. Two relatively chilly basketball teams, Jim Munchie, here in the first period. All right, both teams are struggling a little bit, but uh, both of them now are starting to apply some pressure in the backcourt, so maybe they'll pick up the tempo. Davidson inside. Mark's turnaround. 
And the rebound pulled down by Greg Sewell, who's doing a good job on that defensive board here in the first quarter. Across to Scott Welsh. Here's Sewell. Left side, and uh, ball handling is Michael Rutten. Working around this uh, defense on the uh, perimeter. A shot was fired up and misfired by Jim Martin. And again, Aurora Christian with the basketball. As Mike Mann brings it across. Mann's jumper. Rebound controlled by Jim Martin. Martin for Farmington. Farmington uh, can pull within three this time down the floor. Inside feed, they do, on the bucket by Rob Anderson. And it's a 9-6 score. 2-16 left to go in the first period of the contest. Uh, at the time the timeout was taken, it was, what, 9-2, wasn't it, Jim? And now uh, the gap has been closed by the Farmers. That's it. Uh, Roar Christian's hurried a couple of shots, and Farmington's uh, been a little more patient and scored a couple. Baby to Chesney to Lambert, and here is a reach-in on uh, Michael Rutledge from behind. As Farmington sagging back in that zone defense and uh, really pretty much trying to deny the baseline, it appears, Jim. But uh, Davidson, it plays all over the floor. He's a tough kid to cover. He's real tough. They're just sagging that man-to-man, -man, awful tough, telling Christian they got to shoot the ball outside. They're still in their man, Art. They're just not pressing the ball very tight. And, of course, here we are in the bonus situation with two minutes to go in the first period already. Aurora Christian on the bonus to stubbing the line is Mike Mann. There you get a good look at Mike. He's a senior. Rebound controlled again by Greg Sewell, who has a bundle of defensive rebounds in the first period. Farmington comes down, may turn it over. Lose the ball in the right corner is uh, Rob Anderson. That's five turnovers on Farmington in the ball game. Inbounded to a man. Man bringing the ball up somewhat deliberately as uh, head coach Bob Davidson stands up, or Don Davidson in front of the Aurora Christian bench with some words of instruction. Lambert on the drive. Nice defensive play is hanging in the air and blocking the shot was Rob Anderson. Anderson got a hand on the basketball and blocked it. So Farmington will now uh, have possession. We're going to see it again, Jim. Here comes the drive as he comes through. He gets the hand on the ball from the back and uh, went off the player's hand and to Farmington. It's a good defensive play. Big play by Rob Anderson. The Farmers have it back there down three. Sewell. Right away, uh, rebound is controlled, and a newcomer to the Aurora Christian lineup, Eddie Smith, out there right now. Eddie pulled it down. He's 5'8", 150, a 15-year-old sophomore. Aurora Christian leads it by three, but, boy, they've been stuck at nine for a long, long time, and Farmington has whistled for a foul on Jim Martin on the inside. And, of course, every foul now, the remainder of the half is a bonus situation. I think. Well, let's see. Unless they call it an offensive foul. I guess they did. They yeah. call it number 34, Art. Now the basketball will belong to Farmington. Let's see the officials over to explain this one. The foul was called on Quinn Henning, who has just come in the ball game. Obviously his first. It's an offensive foul, so the basketball goes back to Farmington. Still down three. We've been at 9-6 for a long, long time. Here's Michael Rutledge across. Smith is number 20, digging in defensively. Sewell with Davidson. Look at him eyeball to eyeball out there. Here's the penetration by Rutledge. Nice move. Michael Rutledge with a pull up in the paint, 9-8. Under a minute, 45 seconds left to go in the first period. A one-point ball game as Farmington has rallied from a 9-2 deficit, clawed their way back into this one. Davidson at long range, it's a two-pointer. Just inside the arc, 11-8 ball game. 33 seconds for the first quarter. Across Rob Anderson for the Farmers. Off this time to Scott Welsh, knocked away by Smith. Welsh gets it back to Rutledge. Rutledge eyes it. Bounce pass right back to Welsh. Welsh guns it just inside the arc, rims it. Rebound, all off by Aurora Christian and the person of Louis Lambert with 13 seconds to go in the game's initial period. Mike Mann. To uh, Davidson, Davidson's perimeter, it will not go. The rebound, number 22, Michael Rutledge. Rutledge comes down on the solo, didn't get it off in time. Let's see, call the foul. A foul call just prior to the buzzer. As Rutledge with a great penetration move, he can pull his club within two if he makes them both here. He's taking the ball a whole hard about two or three times, and uh, Davidson got him just before the buzzer. So before we take our break here at halftime, take a look at um, 
Michael Rutledge at the free throw line. Well, let's see what the uh, situation is. I think they say the foul occurred while the before the horn went off, and so therefore the teams have to be back on the floor. Well, Farmington hasn't exactly got lined up on the free throw line, nor has Aurora Christian. They're just kind of wandering around out there. That is a rule, huh? Yeah, they can't be at the bench until you complete it. Yep, they made the first one. <laughs> We've got the 11-9 score. There is that sweet sound of that net again, Art. I, I like that uh, sound effect that they have there on a the bank board. Oh, basketball fans like that. Yep. So at the end of the quarter, we have an 11 to 9 ball game. Aurora Christian on top by two. And now this from one of your network sponsors, the Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin and Illinois. All right, there you see the map of Illinois. Farmington located in uh, Fulton County. Well, let's say a little off center there, kind of up in the uh, northwest portion of the state, but the north central, I guess you could say. The Farmington Farmers, and then on the other hand, you have Aurora, located just outside the greater Chicago area. One of, uh, Jim Dunchy and I were talking, one of the many very successful Aurora ball clubs this season. There's a turnover count right now. Farmington winning that battle five to one. That's not one you really want to win, but nevertheless, they're right in the ball game. Yeah, both teams played sloppy early, and they've settled down a little bit. Michael Rutledge on the dribble. He's number 22. There you'll see the Aurora Christian bench right in the background. A Sewell, a newcomer now in the lineup for Farmington, and that is uh, Mike Kenny. Kenny's wearing number 54. Big Husky guy into the hoop. Here's a half hook. A nice play. Rob Anderson rings the bell with a hook shot. Anderson is uh, an 11.5 scorer on the season. Had 16 in the super sectional victory for Farmington. We're tied at 11 as the Farmer fans go wild across the way. Man for Aurora Christian. Here is Davidson. Mark Davidson pulls it up. Just inside the three-point arc, and a foul is going to be called on Louis Lambert on the rebound. Lambert over the back. We're tied at 11, just underway in the game's second period. Farmington in the super sectional over at East Moline defeated River Ridge out of Elizabeth, 89-72, to a very highly touted ball club. And, of course, Aurora Christian at Romeoville got by Bishop McNamara of Kankakee, 89-72. to Ironically, both teams advanced by identical scores in super sectional play. And yet here today, we've got 11-11 basketball game in the second period. Yep. Rutledge is number 22. He ball handles out front with Scott Wells. That's your backcourt pair for Farmington. And here's a reach in on Louis Lambert. That's his second in the last 15 seconds, Art, and I, I think Coach Davidson might keep him out there. Yeah, Lambert's one of his leapers, 6'1", a 170-pound, 18-year-old senior. Lambert, who uh, averages five points and nine rebounds per ball game, and going to the free throw line is going to be Rob Anderson for Farmington. This is the first opportunity since the very early stages Farmington's had to get the lead. Well, the one and one's on now the rest of the half for both ball clubs, so the fouls could uh, play a part in the outcome of the halftime score. Tom Wiersma's shot no good. Sewell's rebound ever will not go. Rebound, jump ball. Coming down with it was Scott Wells for Farmington. He was tied up from behind, however. And on the change of possession rule, the ball goes over to Aurora Christian. Here's a replay on that missed shot. Davidson gets his hand on it, and Welch ties him up inside there. Possession arrow in favor of Aurora Christian. All right, here's Mann breaking the pressure, brings it across to Louis Lambert. That's the old-fashioned drop pass there by Chosen. He just plain dropped it. If you know him, they came over and picked it up. And a foul, whistle on the inside. This one goes against Farmington. I think Lambert, Lambert was held down there, uh, Art, trying to make a cut. Maybe on Rob Anderson, and that's his second. It is it's on Rob Anderson for Farmer City at the free throw line, number 22, Louis Lambert, for the first time this afternoon. Again, Tritton Westland won the first one. 67-52 over Shelbyville. One more throw for Lambert as Aurora Christian nudges back on top by one at 12-11. Art Kimball, Jim Mungie, and Frank Masoni with you from the Assembly Hall along with Jim Albrecht. Next throw. There's that swish sound again, Jim, that you like so much. 13-11. String music, Art. String music. <laughs> Even from 15 feet. 13-11 ball game, the lead by two to the Eagles of Aurora Christian, coached by Don Davidson. Two years in the IHSA, sweet 16 both years, one of the two years, a lead eight. 
Mike Kenny to Rutledge. Rutledge holding. Rutledge penetrating. Rutledge pulling it up. Kenny couldn't get to the board. Blocked out pretty well on the inside. Kind of squeezed there as uh, for Aurora Christian. Quinn Henning team with Davidson, 34 and 44, to make it tough to get that board. Jumper by Mann. Rebound, Kenny. Kenny just kind of pulled some people out of there. He's 6'1", 200 pounder. He's a senior for Farmington. Here's the move inside to Kenny, blocked by Mark Davidson. Pretty play. Davidson high in the air. You can see it from the overhead shot. Both ball clubs right now are out of their offensive sink. Here's that block by Davidson. Goes up cleanly with the right hand and knocks the ball out of bounds. Okay, back to live action. Number 22 is Michael Rutledge. Fine backcourt player for Farmington. Gets it off to Scott. Uh, I'm going to say Scott Sewell. I should say Scott Welch. Scott rolls away. And Aurora Christian in possession with a two-point lead. Mike Mann to Chesney. Chesney. Baseline jumper. Rebound. Control by Michael Rutledge. There's Rutledge bringing the ball up. Six foot, 155 pound junior for Farmington. 13 11 ball game. It's been airtight to 9 2, the biggest lead. Inside, down low, tie ball game. Rob Anderson. Anderson off the assist from Scott Wells, 13 apiece, with five minutes to go in the half. That time, they exercised some patience and ran the offense and got the layup inside. Both teams have been shooting awfully quick, Art. Mark Davidson has been pretty well negated by Sewell. Here is a shot by Chesney. Won't go. Rebound controlled by Rob Anderson. Take a good look at that uh, Farmington defense, if you will, Jim. I'm not sure they're not boxing a one a little bit on uh, on Davidson. Well, when you when you look at them, they're they're trying to deny him the ball inside and outside. They're just playing him tight, feeling he can't beat him on the drive. Davidson so strong on the boards, he just pulled down that rebound. He averages averages 17 rebounds a game and 21.5 points per game. 17 rebound a game average is unbelievable. And we got a traveling violation call this time against Aurora Christian. Would you believe, Jim, that Davidson has had 20 or more rebounds 11 times this year, 30 or more points seven times. He scored 37 twice. That's his high water mark. There's Tim Pavey, number 42, checking back in the Aurora Christian lineup in a 13-13 ball game. And they have removed Louis Lambert. Well, they've got to get their offense in sync because Davidson's not getting the ball where he can be effective right now. Aurora Christian's only turned the ball over twice thus far as compared with five uh, registered by Farmington. Here's your perimeter shot. Uh, won't go. Shot was taken out there by Scott Welch. Loose basketball controlled by Aurora Christian. As Mike Mann comes across. Man has a shot deflected, knocked away by Rutledge. Credit Rutledge with that block, and here's Farmington coming the other way in a 13-13 ball game. 32 Welch off to Sewell. Farmington with his first lead, if I can recall correctly, 15-13. They went down 9-2 at the start. 3-23 for the half. Man, to Chesney. Here is Davidson. Whistle. Sewell's going to be called for the foul. Sewell definitely is giving Mark Davidson a great deal of personal attention defensively. That's his second foul. And, of course, that could be pivotal, Jim. Uh, here we see a lineup change. And Smith is going to check back in now. Eddie Smith coming in for Aurora Christian. I think Coach Davidson's a little upset with Mann. He's penetrated three or four times and not taking good shots. And I think he's going to talk it over with the whole team right now. And we got a timeout called by Aurora Christian. 15-13 ball game, Jim. 3-15 to go in the half, and Farmington certainly has some second period momentum, don't they? They sure do, and they've got the balance. And uh... Okay, let's take a timeout now for one of your network sponsors, Country Companies. 15-13, Farmington, as we're about to resume play in the second period. Big, big crowd in the assembly hall this afternoon. It's always good to see. Of course, the Class A tournament has been uh, very, very popular for some time. There you're going to see uh, the Farmington break and their pattern offense, Jim. Nice and the pull up, nice pull-up jumper there. They've got to take take their time and be patient. I think Coach Davidson at, at Aurora also wants to do the same thing with his ball club. 
Well, Sewell averages 10.7 points a game, and he is a 65% field goal shooter. Now, here's your game field goal shooting by teams. Farmington, a chilly 33%, but Aurora Christian, a frigid 24% at this juncture. I think a lot of that ours do. They're not taking real good shots at this point. Mark Davidson has drilled the free throw. Nice looking athlete, a junior, the son, of course, of Coach Don Davidson. 6'6", 215 pounder, just a 16 year old. There's a good looking mark. Deep breath. So we're tied at 15. That's bringing the ball up is Michael Rutledge. There's Rutledge, you can see the inside clock with 3.07 left to go in the first half. Airtight ball game, 15 apiece. Number 34 is Jim Martin. Nice entry. Rona pass, Welch. Mark. Welch got it off to Rob Anderson. Anderson with an eight-point total, 17-15. Farmington regains the lead. Across to Eddie Smith now for Aurora Christian to big number 44, Mark Davidson. Here is hitting short folks. Deflected and controlled by Michael Rutledge, who does a lot of things for you. He's a six-foot guard. Their backboard isn't all that small. Rutledge looks a shade bigger than six feet, and uh, Scott Welch is 6'2". They got good average size and good balance at all positions. Play about eight, nine guys, are right? Farmington can take his biggest lead right here. Here's Kenny. Kenny low to Welch off the glass. It rattles around. Rebound Davidson. Still 17-15, 2-16 for the half. Jake Chesney being shadowed by Michael Rutledge, number 22, as he comes across. And we got a traveling call. What do you make of the Farmington defense, Jim? Right now, they're doing a real good job. They're frustrating Davidson. Man's paying a lot of attention to him. They're sagging the other uh, Aurora Christian players, and that's causing them to put it on the floor and take some shots in traffic. They're doing a real good job. Is it a matchup, would you call it? Basically, no, I think you're just playing a real loose man to man defense, Art. And helping out a lot. Helping out and putting a lot of pressure on the big kid. There's Rutledge for Farmington out front with a minute and 50 to go in the half. Low, short turnaround will not go for Rob Anderson. And off the floor, Davidson hauls down the rebound now for Aurora Christian's Eagles. Back out there is the Mike Mann. Mann was on the bench briefly. He's number 12. Look at Davidson trying to post up inside. Now, Davidson's got the ball in the paint. The lefty can't get it in, but here's a follow that runs the bell by Pavey. Then Pavey, with a little bit of reverse action on the inside, ties it at 17. And again, Rutledge, the redhead for Farmington. He is number 22. Number 34 is Kenny. Kenny's going to try it. From the free throw line, rebound to Rutledge, or to uh, Davidson, I should say. Davidson just owns the board at the defensive end. Of course, a kid that averaged 17 rebounds a game, that's not going to surprise you. We're tied at 17. Here is Mann looking for the shot. Looks underneath. Shot will not go. Pavey got the shot. The rebound was controlled by Rob Anderson, and up quickly is Farmington. Scott Welch. Left side to Jim Martin. Well back out here on the floor to Welch, and with... Uh, 42 seconds to go in the half. Farmington gets hit to run it down. Look for the good shot now. They're tied at 17. They were down 9 to 2 at the start of this ball game. They're deadlocked as we approach halftime in this quarterfinal matchup with favorite Aurora Christian. Ball is knocked away. Here is the steal down the floor to Lambert. Lambert underhand layup. Finger roll. Rebound out of there quickly. Down the floor for Martin. Martin loses the ball. Man flies back the other way. Now Man circles out as Rutledge comes out after him. On the right side, Pavey pumps it up with 10 seconds to go. Rebound controlled by Anderson. We're down to five seconds. Off this time to Jim Martin and uh, a whistle stopping play. Near the 10 second line, the ball still belongs to Farmington. They'll inbound with 1.6 seconds. Join on the Assembly Hall scoreboard clock. They may get a shot off, they may not. Sewell. He got it away, came up short, and we're dead even here at the halftime intervention. There you see Tom Wiersma, the Farmington coach, walking off the floor. I'm sure he's rather happy right now to be where he is at the halftime break. And the contest, as you see, deadlocked at 17-17. And now this from one of your network sponsors, John Deere. Deere. 
This is the Country Company's halftime report brought to you by the Country Company. When it matters most, the country's behind you. And now to Jim Aldrich. Thank you, Art. Uh, the gentleman next to me, a name I didn't really even have to memorize because it, it, it is Albrecht as well. This is Brad Albrecht, the head coach of River Ridge. A fine year at River Ridge, 28-1 before bowing out to Farmington in the Super Sectionals at East Moline last Tuesday night. Let's talk about the intensity level that, that seemingly kept building the whole year from the community right onto the team because it was almost like controlled frenzy towards the end of the year. Sure was. Uh, well, we come into this season knowing we'd have a good ball club. The people are behind us in Hanover and Elizabeth, and they knew we had a good ball club. And it was just unbelievable as the season went on and we didn't lose. And, and uh, even before the regional, the signs were all over town and paintings all over the windows. And it was just, you know, on Saturday before the last week of the season, we had townspeople all over and just painting everywhere. And we had signs on the highways. It's just unbelievable intensity. Are you surprised at all about this score at halftime between Farmington and Aurora Christian? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit because they're both up-tempo teams, you know, and 17 to 17 is a low-scoring ball game. Um, Farmington worked so hard to get their points, and I thought maybe they'd have a few more scores, but the big kid for um, Aurora Christian, Davidson, really hasn't gotten a flow of the game yet. Well, when we start talking about your team, we have to mention Ryan Gable, the uh, fine guard, kind of the spiritual leader out there. He averaged 18 points in ball game, and uh, I know you're going to miss him. Yes, we are, and uh, our whole team was that way. We, we, we start four seniors, and Gable was our spiritual leader. He got into the ball game, got into the flow, and I thought against Farmington, he didn't quite get into his game. The Welch kid did a real good job on him, but... We just never got untracked offensively, and that took our ball game away from us. Was this a year of fighting and earning for respect at River Ridge? Because even when you clicked off 15 in a row and then 20, you know, you looked down the poles for whatever they're worth, you didn't see your name up there. Did that have an edge for you at all? I think it had an edge for us. You know, I don't think we get much respect up in the northwestern corner, but, you know, we don't have any major media up there, and, um, you know, we just didn't get any votes, but that was fine. The kids went out and did their job every day, and they played hard, they practiced hard, and they deserve the credit that they did get. 20 years down the road, you'll remember this team. I know that you don't like to put one team ahead of the other because all, all the kids up there give it their best, but this is going to be a memory for you, I'm sure. Oh, it sure was. You know, the kids were so much fun to have in practice, and they worked so hard, and, and they, they were just fun to be with, and, and they, they deserve a lot of credit. They were a lot of fun. Do you think Farmington can hang in here? Will they slow down the tempo in the second half? Would that be much to their uh, favor? According to my scouting reports, and when we played them, they don't slow it down much. And like I said, they work awfully hard to get a basket. And I think their biggest concern is to keep Davison out of the ball game for Aurora Christian. Coach, a great season up there in River Ridge, and uh, we'll hope to see you down here again, but on the court instead. Okay, that'd be great. Thanks, Jim. That is Brad Albrecht of River Ridge. We're going to come back with the start of the second half. Let us pause for these messages. Well, at halftime, we got a 17-17 ball game here in the Assembly Hall between uh, Farmington and Aurora Christian. The winner to meet Trenton Westland tomorrow morning, Jim Bungie. And really not a lot to choose in the first half of the ball game, is there? No, the first half was a little sloppy to, uh, today, Art. They, uh, their shot selection wasn't real good. The kids looked like they were a little uptight. I, I think the second half we're going to see a uh, ball game improve. Well, it was interesting, the uh, River Ridge coach commented he didn't think Davidson had really gotten into the flow of his game as yet, and I suppose that's true with a couple of the Farmington kids, too, but both defenses are pretty good. Yeah, they're doing a nice job taking away the strengths of the other teams, and uh, uh, Davidson will, will score some points this half, and uh, I think uh, Rutledge will, will continue to do a good job for Farmington. It's a really different defensive assignment for the two clubs, isn't it? you got Davidson, a superstar, very heavy scorer, for uh, Aurora Christian, and of course, Farmington has pretty good balance, so the Aurora Christian defense can pretty well spread itself and equalize itself. On the other hand, you've got to do something with Davidson. Right, and they're, they're doing a nice job with him. They're giving help off of their man and uh, uh, keeping him from getting the ball in the low post, and it's been very effective in the first half. You know, basketball is a funny game anyway. It's a game of such momentum, and, and Jim, I think Farmington picked it up in the second quarter. It looked for a while like they'd never got off the treadmill. They were down nine to two, once they got the thing tied, they seemed to take, not command, but to play pretty comfortably, I thought. Well, I think the key there, uh, Roar Christians, about three minutes yeah, during right. that period, and sure uh, that gave Farmington some confidence, and then uh, from that point on, it's been a real struggle between the two. We don't have anybody in any serious foul trouble here at halftime. We're going to see the uh, team statistics coming up, and let's take a look at them. Neither team shooting the ball well. Aurora Christian, well, they improved 3% from the first quarter. They're all the way up to 
on uh, six of 27. But Farming is only shooting 31%, but two more buckets, free throws. Aurora Christian uh, with uh, five of six, one of three, as you can see for Farmington. And uh, the rebounding is pretty even, but Farmington has maybe a somewhat surprising edge at 20 to 16. Farmington's turned it over seven times. Team fouls are not a big factor. So statistically, again, they're pretty even. Yeah, they are. And uh, I'm surprised that rebounding, uh, that might be the big key in the second half too, Art. Okay, now this from the IHSA. All right, there's your Farmington scoring the first half of the ball game. Rod Anderson, a 6-1 senior forward, leading the way with eight. Uh, backcourt player Michael Rutledge has five. And Greg Sewell has really done a great defensive job, but Mark Davidson has a two-point total for Farmington. And we're going to see Rod Anderson go to work here. All right, we're going to see Davidson first, uh, Jim. Davidson's putting up a three out there with a hand all over him. He's got great rotation and good range for a kid 6'6". Six, six. Wasn't quite a three. He was just barely inside the arc. Okay, now let's take a look at Rob Anderson. Now, Anderson's had uh, a pretty good first half. He posts up strong, gets a nice entry pass, a little pump fake to freeze the uh, big boy, and then lays it off the glass. He got inside of Davidson. There's your uh, story for Aurora Christian. Uh, Davidson leading the way with six. That's well under his norm. Uh, four for Chesney and Mann with three. And uh, so nobody has really broken out in the scoring column in this one, to say the very least. And as a result, we got the 17-17 ball game. There's Don Davidson in that right scarlet sport coat from uh, Aurora Christian. Pretty good record for 13 years of coaching. Davidson, uh, of course, also is the principal. And athletic director, so he has a little power. He can, he can go to the next guy up the ladder and get anything he wants. He was the coach at Yorkville from 1972 through 77. Overall coaching record, 312 and 193 in 19 years in this business. That's a good job. Don, Don does a nice job. This, this ball club will play a little stronger this half, and I know Coach Weirs will have his team really coming out, going to play the second half the way they think they should. Well, official Thomas Bryant from Effingham hands the basketball to uh, Farmington. Scott Welch, and we're underway to Michael Rutledge. Here in the assembly hall, second game of the quarterfinal round. Trenton Westland won the first one over Shelbyville this afternoon. Jim Martin, number 34 for Farmington, rather deliberately off to Scott Welch. There's Rutledge. Here's Martin working through what appears to be an Aurora Christian zone defense, batted around out front, and Sewell retrieves in uh, the corner. Rolling along the near sideline as we view it from our broadcasting position and scooped up over here by Scott Welch. Well, Farmington runs that box offense and makes it look like a zone, but uh, they're playing man-to-man. Yeah, -man. They're they just are. switching. Yeah, yeah, I just saw Louis Lambert flash out there, and here's a shot on the inside by Rutledge. So Michael Rutledge gives the lead to Farmington by two at 19-17. Man down for Aurora Christian. To Pavey. Baseline. Rebound. Chesney. Tip by Davis. Oh, what a big league play that was. Huh? Davidson forced that ball home. Tough play. It looks like Farmington is letting uh, Baby shoot the ball. 19-19 ball game on a left-handed strong arm tip in by uh, junior center Mark Davidson. Martin from the side. Two-pointer. First bucket for Jim Martin, and it's a 21-19 ball game. Farmington by two. This thing ever since uh, Farmington closed the gap and tied it, and 11-11 has been uh, two-pointer one way or the other. Davidson has fouled with a power move underneath. That's the first time in about 15 playing minutes that they've isolated the big boy down low and made a post-entry pass. And they're going to have to do that if they're going to control the basketball. There's the man upon whom the foul was called, Mr. Sewell, and that's three. Well, you know, Art, if uh, Aurora Christian scores 70 more points, they'll have as many as they scored in their super sectional game. <laughs> to give you an idea, these teams can score. Well, Davidson can't get it down. Let's see what Mark Davidson normally does at the line. Well, a 76% free throw shooter on the norm. That one rattled in. Boy, that used every inch of iron up there, including the box support. 21-20, Farmington by a point over Aurora Christian. As Michael Rutledge in the purple for Farmington's Farmers, who are playing a whale of a ball game for Coach Tom Wiersbaugh this afternoon. They like this daytime basketball. Pass picked off by Lambert, then deflected and controlled over here by Chesney. 
And now it's Mann with the basketball. Mann get a little bit of token pressure from Scott Welch, number 32 of uh, Farmington on the perimeter, Chesney. Can't get her down. Rebound, Haiti. Lambert, Davidson, Davidson. Misses the first, gets the foul, won't go, foul. Good strong effort, eff uh, second effort by Davidson, and he can put the ball on the floor and take it to the basket too, Art. Well, he sure can, and that's another foul on Sewell, I think. Yep, that is on Sewell. That's foul number four on Greg Sewell. So he's going to have to sit down for a while, and one would think that would make a difference in the defensive effort of Farmington because he's been on Davidson. Uh, they do have good balance, but uh, Sewell's also a good offensive player, so it may be seen if their bench can pick up this pace defensively and, and uh, maintain control of Davidson. Well, Davidson is just tied it at the line with 5.50 to go in the third quarter. There you'll see Sewell sitting on the bench with that fourth foul. And Davidson gives Christian the lead. So the Eagles move out on top by one. Almost came up with a steal. A little bit of token pressure. In fact, more than token, I think, right now. You see the ball about to be inbounded here by Scott Welch. Well, they've played those passing lanes real tough. Got a lot of deflections. They just haven't got any recoveries off them. Well, we've got a 22-21 ball game. The lead to Aurora Christian. And uh, Michael Rutledge trying to uh, spark Farmington back on top. Early stages, game's third period. We were deadlocked 17 17 at halftime. Here's Mike Kenny holding it. Kenny is number 54. He looks inside. Now to Scott Welch, number 32. Here's Welch. On top to Rod Anderson. And they turn it over. Stolen by Mann. Mann almost lost against the double team as quickly. Farmington went to a trapping type of defense, Jim. There went that, uh, you know, poke away. This time they got the recovery. That's a three by Davidson. Will not go. And the rebound to number 22, Michael Rutledge, who works the board pretty well. In fact, this whole Farmington ball club does a pretty good job on the board. Kenny Low fouled. Picked off by Louis Lambert. On Lambert, that's foul number three. He sailed across the baseline and made contact with Kenny. Kenny may be at the line here. This may be a shooting violation. Lambert really got up that time, but uh, he got a little piece of the arm, so we're going to get a couple of free throws here. We'll see it again. There's the entry pass. Yep, hard hard to see it. the foul at that point. Well, Farmington's Kenny just set as a throw, and we're tied at 22 in the third period. Kenny's a 73% free throw shooter. Aurora Christian controls. They're tied at 22 as Mann has the basketball. Always in the quarterfinal round down here. Somebody weathers something more than uh, a poor performance. Free throw or field goal by Davidson on the hook. What I was trying to say, Jim, and didn't say it very well. Somebody weathers a poor performance and makes it to the semifinals. Usually the second day, it's a different looking ball club. That's right. Martin, Kenny. Off this time to Anderson, and he was wrapped pretty good by Mike Mann. Mann picks it up, and now Rob Anderson will be at the line where he is 0 out of 1 on the afternoon. Here's a look at that empty pass again, and a nice pass across the lane, and there's the foul from over the back. Even when they get the ball clean, Art referees seem to always call that a foul. <laughs> yeah. Rob Anderson shooting a pair. 24-22, Aurora Christian on the lead, third quarter. Now it's 24-23. You get the feeling, Jim Munchie, this is going to be one of those nail biters. I don't think anybody's going to be able to establish control in this period. Frank eh? Fasoni calls them throat tighteners. <laughs> Second throw. 24-24. Yeah, nobody has nobody's pulled away and taken command here, have they? Man down for the Eagles. Here's Davidson. Oh, pretty back door all alone to Lambert. And when you double team, you leave somebody free, and Davidson found him, and easy layup. All right, that's the first bucket for Aurora Christian. Here is Rutledge on the pull-up. Rebound, Kenny for Farmington. Lambert pulls it down. Lambert jumps very well for his height and uh, is starting to get on the boards a little bit in his half. 
Here's a replay here, the shot taken in the lane. Watch Lampert get up, control the ball, and he got hooked on the side. Need to check with Dennis Flynn, my statistician, for Lambert, first bucket of the ball game or first bucket of the quarter? Of the game, okay. I thought they uh, had some field goals in the quarter. Here is Davidson. The Chesney at three-point range. Rebound to number 22, Michael Rutledge. 26-24, Aurora Christian. Got Welch. And the whistle stopping play. Another foul has been called, and this one will go against Aurora Christian. And that's foul number four. Being flashed on uh, Lambert. So we have two players riding with four fouls, Greg Sewell for Flemington and uh, Louis Lambert for Aurora Christian. That's a big loss for Aurora Christian. Uh, Lambert was doing a nice job on the boards this period. Well, of course, Sewell, too. Two blue chip players in the ball game are sideline with four fouls right now. Rod Anderson holding high for Farmington. They're trying to post Welch inside a little bit now against this man to man. He took man inside. Here he is outside. Welch number 32. Low to Kenny against Davidson. Shot is missed, and Davidson with the board. Here's a kid averaging 17 rebounds a game for the Eagles. He just knifed that rebound out of there. Aurora Christian with a two-point lead, 26-24, as they bring it down. Pavey. Pavey ever heats up, they're going to have to go out on him. Here's Henning with the board. Glenn Henning with the follow-up. You know, Art, speaking of rebounds, Davidson has 20 times, or 11 times, 20 rebounds or more this season. That's a, a great yeah. stat. 11, 20 or more. Pull-up. By Rutledge rings the bell. 28-26. Yeah, you couple that with seven times of 30 points or better. Pretty dominant player. Here's Pavey, Davidson. Trying to get the ball to Henning. Great play by Michael Rutledge. Rutledge, one of those unsung hero types, isn't he, Jim? He's having a very good game. That was a smart defensive play, and offensively, he's penetrated and created some problems for Aurora Christian. Two-point lead to Aurora Christian. And now this from one of your network sponsors, Country Company. But we'd been ahead the entire ball game. Kalen made a rally. They got close to us. We had an out-of-bounds play on the sideline. Danny made eye contact with me. We had played together since the third grade, so I knew he was going to break for the basket. I threw him the ball. He scored the basket. We went on to win the game. Brent Browning, 1973 Class A MVP for Ridgeway, and his fellow country company's agents salute this week's players. You know, we felt we weren't just playing for ourselves. We were playing for the entire southeastern Illinois. Okay, 2.09 to go in the third quarter. Here we're going to see that rebound effort by Henning coming up. Pavey misses that outside shot. Henning goes up nice inside, gets a nice putback. So far in the third quarter, Farmington is 3 of 6 from the field. Uh, Aurora Christian is 4 of 11. So the Eagles continue to have trouble finding the range. Pavey will trigger it in. As for Davidson, and we'll see who they're going to give it to. Going to go back to Aurora Christian. The officials looked a little puzzled on the play. Now you have a conference between uh, P.D. Highsmith from Oblong and Thomas Bryant from Effingham. Before we inbound the basketball, Mr. Highsmith is going over to talk with the official scorer. Want well, to make sure that possession arrow is set properly yeah. on this, Art. That's so important anymore. It's a the era of the no-jump ball has been with us for some time. Well, the inbound pass, Farmington, foil that strategy, and they come down very quickly. Rob Anderson, number 42, but out here to Mr. Rutley. They swing it to Kenny. Got a holdout, and this, I believe, is going to go on Quinn Henning. Henning inside, holding out for Aurora Christian. I may have inadvertently occasionally recurred to them to Chicago Christian. If I have, I apologize. But, of course, I think of the many times Chicago Christian was down here, coached by Will Schlager. And, uh, of course, this is not Chicago Christian, it's Aurora Christian. And here's a holdout on Jake Chesney. I tell you, guys, been surprisingly silent this half is Anderson for Farmington after yep. an eight-point first half, almost half their 17 points. I don't know if he scored this half. Got a couple of free throws. The run to 10, and now Scott Welch is at the line. 
28-26. Aurora Christian on the lead by two in a real struggle here in the assembly hall. Oh, look at that rebound by Davidson. You don't think great, he isn't dominant? Great pair of hands. He weighs 215 pounds, too. A strapping 16-year-old. I'll tell you, his dad, Don, is no little guy. The coach of the Eagles. Here's Henning. Henning in the paint. Wanted to shoot it, I think. Didn't want to pass it. At any rate, it was picked off by Kenny of Farmington. And the Farmers with a chance to tie once again. Welch. Off this time to Anderson. A whistle. A foul stopping play, and it looks like they're going to call Jim Martin for the personal. I think he was over the back. Henning had him boxed out pretty well. Or Pavey, excuse me, had him boxed out pretty well. Foul did go to Jim Martin. Let's see it again. And we look at it again. There's Pavey. Came over his back there. Caught him across the arm. Final stages, game's third quarter. Scoreboard clock shows 116 to go as Mann has the ball for the Eagles of Aurora Christian. And the rebound to Michael Rutledge as the Eagles still can't find the range. Neither ball club has been able to shoot with any consistency. Both teams that shoot very well on the season. Here is Martin at long range. Rebound back out to Rutledge off the floor. More of a recovery than a rebound. Michael Rutledge knocks it in, and now we got a 28-28 ball game. I like Rutledge, Art. He's a real scrappy kid. He's always heads up and he's awake. They're putting a little pressure on right here. 11 point uh, total for Rutledge on the ball game as we're tied at 28. Farmington on the season shoots 56% from the field. Aurora Christian shoots 48% from the field. Neither close to that this afternoon. Davis. Swings off a little pick and drills it. 15 points for uh, Mark Davidson at this point. Looks and like the Aurora Farmers are going to run her down for one, Art. Yeah, we're down to 14 seconds. Aurora Christian on that shot by Davidson measures on top by two at 30 to 28. There you see the inset clock. There's a perimeter shot by Martin. The rebound, Davidson. Who else, huh? Outlet to Chesney. Chesney from behind the timeline, and that's it. Three periods of history. Aurora Christian on top by two at 30 to 28. And let's pause for these. Match up with Aurora Christian on top by two at 30 to 28. Low scoring basketball game. And here's that pull up jumper by Davidson to give him that 30 to 28 lead. Art just come yep. off a nice pick, planted those feet, nailed that left handed jumper. Well, right now, if there is a difference in the ball game, it probably is Mark Davidson with a 15 point total and a great job on the board. All right, he's a dominant factor for uh, Aurora Christian for sure. Five of 15 for the field for Davidson in the ball game. That's below his normal shooting percentage too. All right, Farmington inbounds the basketball to start the final quarter. Down two. The Farmers have come to play today, and so have the Eagles, and it's resulted in a tight, low-scoring basketball game in the quarterfinal round of the Class A state tournament. Scott Welch holding high, and we got a foul away from the ball on man, I believe. That's one of those calls that uh, you tell your kids to play tough behind uh, post defense and uh, away from the ball, and we get a foul call. But... Aurora Christian uh, has really been a man-to-man -man ball club throughout the afternoon with a little bit of help, and uh, free throw is up and in by Rutledge. Farmington, on the other hand, has done a little bit of everything. Really little combination work on Davidson, but uh, I think you have to basically say they've been matching. Depends been... on what you want to call the defense, I guess. Second throw. Aurora Christian's been able to get the ball to Davidson on a low post in the third quarter, which they did not do in the first half, and that's why his point total has moved up there. And, of course, Sewell is out of there with four fouls. That's another factor. We're tied at 30 on the two free throws. Davidson. Well, Mark Davidson, I think, feels he needs to carry this ball club himself, and so far he is uh, playing brilliantly. 32 to 30. Sometimes a kid like that's more outstanding in a low-scoring ball game. His figures may not be as astounding, but uh, he makes the big plays. There's no question about that. Fine talent. Here's Kenny against Davidson. He turns, got it. I tell you, Mike Kenny has given uh, Tom Wurzbaugh a tremendous effort off the bench, hasn't he? He sure has. He takes up some space. He's a pretty big kid, and he's knocked down a couple buckets. Sewell is back out there for Farmington here at the start of the fourth quarter. They've taken Martin out. Now, remember, Sewell's riding with four fouls. 
Louis Lambert is still on the bench for Aurora Christian riding the four. We're tied at 32 in this one. The winner takes on a smooth Trenton Westland ball club that just displayed great balance, four players and double figures in a route to a 67 to 52 victory over Shelbyville in the quarterfinal opener this afternoon. Davidson from the side. Two-pointer once again by Mark Davidson, but he's starting to count them now, 34-32. Four buckets in a row by uh, Mark Davidson have rung the bell. 34-32, but no matter how brilliant Davidson may be, Jim, uh, it's been impossible for Aurora Christian to pull away from the very tenacious Farmer, uh, Farmer, uh, Farmington Ball Club. I agree with you. They're hanging on tough, and they just can't shake them. Here's Kenny to Michael Rutledge. Back to Sewell. Sewell played with four fouls, and uh, he certainly did a great job against Davidson earlier on in this contest. Rutledge. Back out to uh, Welch. Welch is going to try the pull-up. Rebound that time by Quinn Henning. Henning skied over the defensive rebounder and got the basketball out of there for uh, Aurora Christian. They lead it by 2, 34-32. Looking for some breathing room. Here's Pavey. To Davidson. From anywhere, Art, from anywhere. That's the biggest lead anybody's enjoying the second half of the ball game. Four, 36-32. I see a very familiar figure sitting on the Aurora Christian bench, Dick Dorsey, who did such a tremendous job over the years at West Aurora before his retirement. He helped the underclassmen at uh, Aurora Christian. Davidson has 15 uh, points in the second half of the ball game. Here's Sewell. Rebound, rebound, still uh, loose, and finally Mann digs it out of there. The backcourt player, Mike Mann, 5'10", 140-pound, 18-year-old senior. Here you see bringing him across. He's working on Rutledge. The Chesney, they looking low to Davidson. Davidson trying to post up with Sewell still on him, even with four fouls, and Davidson called for traveling. Good defensive job by Greg Sewell. Sewell has dug in and denied him the uh, move to the basket. Even with four fouls, he's playing him tough. He's going out right now. He's a little tired at this point, I think. Yeah, checking back in is Jim Martin. Martin went out for a breather. And, of course, in a game as intense as this one, it's, it's necessary, isn't it, Jim? You give your kids a breather now and again. Because all those regulars, all the key people have to be out there the last two minutes, most certainly. Four-point leader, Rory Christian. Big trip down. Rutledge great got it. Play. Off a great assist. In the assist to Scott Welch and Rutledge with the layup. 36-34. Ten point second half for Michael Rutledge for Farmington. Here's Davidson. Almost unstoppable when he gets the ball in that low block like that. 38-34. Aurora Christian by four. Across is Martin. Kenny. Rebound. Struggle for Anderson. Had it, but he lost it. Taken away by Jake Chesney. Chesney, smallest guy on the floor for Aurora Christian at 5-9 with a steal. The man. Man to Henning. Henning in the paint. Drives and got it. And fouled on the play. Big, big play by reserve Quinn Henning. I think Coach Weirs was looking for a timeout right now, Art. He needs to keep this close. Foul was on Anderson. We're going to see it again. But first, we're going to have a timeout with a score 40 to 34. Aurora Christian will be back after this from one of your network sponsors, John Deere. Well, we're just about at the halfway point in the game's final period. Aurora Christian has built up a six-point lead. Gonna see Davidson again. Nice penetration by Mann. Spots the open man. Nice pump fake. Gets everybody up and then cashes in on the bucket, plus he gets fouled. So, not could Davidson. be a three-point play. Yeah, not Davidson, pardon me. Quinn Henning, who uh, has done a heck of a job out there off the bench for Aurora Christian. Henning, by the way, is a 42% field goal shooter. He's at the free throw line. Not exactly great shakes there, Jim. 50%. You got a couple of guys at Lawrenceville, that kind of free throw shooter? Yeah, I'm afraid we do. But <laughs> young man comes in and does a nice job off the oh, bench. I gives him some rebounding, and that's important. Super sub, no doubt about that. 40 to 34, Aurora Christian. 356 and counting. Mark. Now off to uh, Scott Welch. Here's Sewell. Sewell has really played an inspired ball game for Farmington today. The Farmers have a lot to be very happy with. A hook by Anderson. 
40 to 36. Aurora Christian lead is impaired to four once again. Here's that double team on man. Back out there is Smith in the backcourt for Aurora Christian to help out. Eddie Smith, very quick little backliner. Pavey controls, number 42, and here's Mann. Mann's pretty reliable, isn't he? Pretty solid playmaker. Not too bad. They use that diamond press, and now they're in a 1-3-1. Looks like they're going to trap everywhere if they can. Get a turnover. Yep, they sure did. Sewell comes up with a loose basketball. A chance for Farmington to pull within one on a three, within two on a two-point bucket. On the drive, they got the two. Scott Welch. 40-38. Aurora Christian lead has been paired to two. There's Smith up. Baby. Davidson. Davidson being hounded out front by Michael Rutledge. You can bet Rutledge will be all over this uh, court here in the last two minutes and 45 seconds. He's a real gamer, Art. He's a very nice player. Davidson, you talk about a money shot. There's a three-point bomb from deep, deep out of the corner. 43 to 38. Aurora Christian, 26 points now for Mark Davidson with 2.27 left. The heat is on Farmington. Mark working low to Anderson. Anderson misses it. Rebound up and in by Welch. Scott Welch, a 6'2 guard, a 150 pounder, a junior. Makes it 43 40. Davidson across. The hitting once again reverses it. No good. Tip by Davidson. No good. Rebound, Davidson foul. Really horsing the offensive board, and Scott Welch picks up foul number two. This is a great shot, Jim. Watch him penetrate through the defense. Nice pass up the sideline to Davidson. Puts it on the floor, sees the man underneath. Nice look off pass. Tries that little reverse layup but doesn't go, and then Davidson just stays with it on the board until he gets himself out. All right, Mark Davidson at the line. 26 point total for Davidson. Nice rebound. Back out there is Louis Lambert, the guy that skied. He's been on the bench with four fouls, number 22. And that's a clutch rebound with 155 to go in a 43-40 ball game. Well, Pavey was getting a little tired, and uh, Lambert's been down a long time. Davidson. Lambert. Davidson off the man. A minute and 39 left. Chesney. Lambert. 43 to 40, our score. Aurora Christian by three. They have possession. They're also going to bring the ball out now, Art. Almost stolen from behind. Chesney dives. Trying to get rid of the basketball. We have a jump ball, but it's going to still belong to Aurora Christian on the change of possession rule. The Eagles maintain possession. Aurora Christian, a school that uh, listed enrollment of 174 in Independence, non conference ball club against Prairie Line Conference member Farmington. And finally, the man, an all-over man, wrapped up by Scott Welch. Welch was gambling on the steal. I'm not sure they wanted the foul there, Jim. Well, that was a, you know, there was a little contact. A uh, young man catching the basketball. Man, uh, if he wouldn't have got the foul, he got called for traveling because he took that extra step, but uh, the foul was first. Mike Mann at the line. 118 to go. His club up three. So he gets the bonus, 44-40. Aurora Christian trying to weather the storm. 29-2 and two record. Second throw, man. Two big, big free throws. Aurora Christian, 45. Farmington, 40. The Farmers need to make a run. There's still ample time. 1-12 to go. From the side, Mark. Out front, retrieved by Rutledge, number 22, for the purple-clad Farmington ball club. To Scott Welch. Welch, a three-pointer. Look at the battle for the rebound, and Davidson comes down with it once again. Tremendous job on the defensive board in particular for Davidson. We're under a minute with 52 seconds now. Aurora Christian, 45. Farmington, 40. And the Eagles just threw it away. Well, that time, uh, Davidson picked the ball up right across midcourt, and he didn't have anyone to go to except a cross-court pass, and he was just too hot to handle. Well, Farming has got to make some quick moves. They're down to 45 seconds. They're down five. Martin from the side. Three-pointer won't go. Martin gets his own board. Was fouled by Quinn Hemme, his third. Well, I think that's Lambert's foul, and he's heading towards the bench, so I think he knows it was Oh, well, they give it to Lambert? Uh -huh. Lambert was there, so was Henning. You're right. 
That's five on Louis Lambert. Lambert, who is an excellent rebounder, very, very, probably the strongest leaper on this ball club, has fouled out. Whereas Greg Sewell has been able to play most of the fourth quarter and is still riding with four fouls at the line. Big, big free throws for Jim Martin. That's the first one. Well, anytime one you one get situation. it down to three, you just one possession, you tie her back up. Yeah, in this day and age, 45-41. The three-point shot has made all the difference in the world. Aurora Christian by four. Second throw. Rebound to Farmington. Battling underneath. Well, try to get a shot up. Loose basketball. Quinn Henning retrieves it. Here's man foul on uh, Jim Martin. 30.4 seconds. Looks like we got a timeout. I think Coach Davidson wants to talk this over. Okay. 30.4 seconds. Aurora Christian 45. Farmington 41. Now this from one of your sponsors, the Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin and Illinois. Well, you can see the time, just 30.4 seconds. So let's watch this replay, Jim. Puts up the free throw. We got nice rebound in there. Got, got Welch had a shot Welch blocked. picked that off. Shot was blocked, and then uh, Henning comes down with another big rebound. He's been he's been around that board when he's been in the basketball game and done the job. That's that super sub we were talking about. Right. In addition, and finally, uh, Mike Mann, once they sort it all out, gets to the free throw line. There you see Mike. He was kind of a free throw shooter man is on the season. Not too bad, 64% of the line for a man. Two timeouts left for the Farmers and three for the Eagles. Well, rebound, hauled down by Greg Sewell. 26 seconds left, four point ball game. Aurora Christian on the lead. Here is Welch, pass intercepted by Davidson with 20 seconds to go. Davidson with a slam dunk. Big, big play by Mark Davidson. 47-41. That's good feeling for the Eagles. Rutledge flies down for Farmington. Was fouled out front by man. That's the last thing they wanted. And so far as Aurora Christian was concerned, stops the clock with 7.9 seconds. At the line is Michael Rutledge. Good. Catch a replay of that dunk. Davidson gets in the passing lane, puts it on the floor. Oh. <laughs> Hammers it with the right hand for a left-hander. That was a pretty nice dunk, Art. 28 points. Free throw by Rutledge. As it rolls off, the score remains at 47-41 with 7.9 seconds left to go. And Rutledge nails the second. 47-42. Davidson against the pressure. Down to three seconds to go in the ball game. Now 2.3. And it looks very much, well, now it looks like it's a wet pipe clinch now that Aurora Christian is going to survive. Good hit on Davidson. Less than 10 seconds in the backcourt. He's just going to hang on to basketball, and he has confidence in his ability to shoot the free throws, and yep. they finally fouled him, and uh, there's not much Farmington can do. Well, Davidson has uh, certainly lived up to his all-state accolades in this one, I think. Yes, he sure has. He's shown he can do a lot of things, and as a junior, he's uh, he's going to be an outstanding player for somebody in a couple of years and for his own their own team again next year. 48-42, second throw. Rebound controlled by Farmington. Less than a second, the ball over. And Aurora Christian hangs on to win a very, very, very tough quarterfinal game in the Assembly Hall in Champaign. By a final 48 to uh, 42 margin, and we'll move into a meeting tomorrow morning with uh, Trenton Westland here at the Assembly Hall. So here we are with uh, Aurora Christian on top, and we'll be back 